get ball hairs and snout with Olympus Reptiles, but today we're not talking about our balls, we're talking about our carpets. We are going to talk about this guy. You've got my leg. Okay, is that good? We all happy now? Is that what we're going to do? Hold on to my leg. This is our Kronos, our male jungle jag carpet python. And one thing I always have to say when I do a carpet python video, because if you ever watch our early videos, before we really cared, we screwed this up, we didn't edit it, we corrected it later in the video, but I still got a lot of flack for it. These guys are from <laughs> Australia. And you can see they're much more active than ball pythons. He's very friendly. Look at the colors on this guy. Here's the thing. Carpet pythons are known to be very active snakes. They're known to be quite handleable when they get a little age. They can be very nippy as babies. And they're also known to be really good feeders. You guys know we feed mostly live. That's what we do. We're going to attempt to feed this snake live. I already know how this is going to end. We'll see what you guys think. We'll see what Kurt thinks is going to happen. But I can tell you what's going to happen. And you'll hear that wheeze sometimes on these guys. Don't worry about that. It's not like a ball python where that wheeze instantly means. Let's see if we hear it. That he's got some kind of infection. They're so long, they got really long lungs, that when they're crawling over trees, that'll cause that a little bit sometimes. But uh, he's obviously perfectly, there it was. And it's because I'm putting pressure like right in there. He's going to a little bit. He'll also make his sound sometimes from that. Uh, but there, there's one of them. But he's perfectly healthy. So we'll let him go back in there. Now, can they get respiratory? Absolutely. You'd see it in their mouth. They'd be bubbling. They'd be blowing like bubbles, all kinds of nasty stuff. So get him in there. He's getting a really new place soon. He'll be one of our first snakes to move into our new enclosures. We're going to close this up for just a second. We're going to cut this video. We're going to go grab a live rodent. And we're going to attempt to feed him a live rodent. Before you start hating on this, we'll see how it works. So I don't want to get going, you shouldn't feed live. Well, we do. Get over it. Don't yell at me for it. I'm going to keep doing it. And for anybody that wants to type on there about how I feed live, because all these guys are going to get fed live tonight, but not on video, don't worry. You're just falling on deaf ears. You're just wasting your time and giving me a chuckle because I'm going to continue to do me. So just, just, just don't. It's just, it's just a waste of time for both of us. Let's go get him a rat, Kurt. All right, guys, it's time to feed this rat to this snake. Let's drop him in there. Let's watch what happens. Let's see. I think I know. I know the results of this already. Here it goes. Here it goes. I'm going to pull up a chair and get real close. And we're going to watch this happen. Now, there's a point to this video, okay? And that point is going to be that certain snakes feed certain ways. And you need to know your snake. Now... I feed almost exclusively live. And you can see him being somewhat interested. But that rat can crawl around forever. He is not going to bite it. This snake has not taken a live meal in probably four or five years. And he won't. He won't do it. We could do this all day. He's not going to bite it. He's not going to eat it. He may bite it eventually if it pisses him off. But he's not going to eat it. Now... Watch what happens. We'll be right back. Let's cut that video for a second. All right, guys, I'm going to take all these guards off here so you can get a better view. Uh, there's no camera tricks. This is the same day. Now, we have removed the live rat. It's no longer in there. He didn't need it. So, my point is, and usually this works in reverse. Usually it's a snake that won't take frozen thawed you have to feed live to. But some snakes may not take live, and you have to take care of your snake and your animals. So, since I have one that won't eat live, we always do keep a stock of frozen thawed. The difference is we make most of our frozen thawed ourselves. We gas them to death with CO2. We have our own death chamber. Uh, somebody's going to scream about that. If you go to Rodent Pro or wherever and you buy a bunch of frozen thawed rats, guess how they kill them? They gas them in a CO2 chamber. It's a standard way of euthanasia is gas them in a CO2 chamber. Uh, it really kills them pretty similar to the way constriction does. I'm not even sure if it's any quicker, but... That's beside the point. Death is going to be death. So we're going to take this frozen thawed rat. He's warm. You're going to see a very different reaction. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to give it to him by hand. Just like that. Num num. And there you go. You'll get a feed every time. So he will only eat the frozen thawed. He will not eat the live. He eats that quite regular. I wanted you to see it wasn't somewhere he wasn't hungry. Uh, now, I will say in the making of this video, no rodents were harmed. That one was harmed prior to making the video. Kurt, did you CO2 that one yourself? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So we did harm that one prior to making the video. But in the making of this video, no no rodents were harmed. The one that you saw was removed and is still alive. And he probably will be for the next, I think, hour? 
Yeah. Probably. And then we're going to feed him to something too. So I'm just saying that so I can get just a little bit of people complaining. <laughs> but again, the point is always the same. you got to do what's best for your snake. If that's feeding frozen thawed, feed frozen thawed. If your snakes feed better on live, feed live. Do what's best the animal you have. You know, unfortunately, they don't eat carrots. If, that's, if that thing would eat carrots, I'd just buy carrots, but it won't eat them. We tried once. It just kind of went south. He looked at the carrot for two days, and nothing happened. And I got worried that if I left it under the carrot, it might attack the snake, and I had to pull it out. So, plus, it started to rot. It was bad. We didn't really do that for the sake of it, but that's always our joke. People complain about feeding an animal to an animal. And somebody's on here is going to watch, see how inhumane it is to feed another animal to an animal. But I want you to go home. If you think that's really inhumane to do, I want you to go home if you have a cat or dog, especially. If you don't, then kudos to you. But if you have a cat or dog, I want you to read on that cat or dog food pack, okay? And it's going to say crude protein. And I want you to think where that crude protein comes from. Depending on the food you have, it may break down where it comes from and how much of a percentage is from animal and which animal it's from, whether it's chicken or beef or whatnot. But the point I'm making is I feed an entire whole animal to another animal. Yes, I do. And I understand that visually that's harder to accept than feeding a, a bowl full of kibble to my dog. But when I feed a bowl full of kibble to my dog, he's eating other animals. Okay? It's what he's doing. He's eating other animals. When I feed kibble to my cats, they're eating other animals. That's what's happening. That is what is taking place. And they eat that every day. And there's a lot more waste in a mammal's body than there is in a reptile's body. So it's going to eat that whole item. It's going to digest the bones for calcium. It's going to digest almost everything. It's going to put almost all of that to use. So it's really a more efficient means of that rodent's life than it would be feeding, you know, uh, leftovers to your cat or dog. But almost all the pets that we keep as humans... I'm saying almost all, so some of you will have some vegetarian things out there, eat meat. Uh, some of them are omnivores, but they all are going to eat other animals. It's just the way it is. So don't get on my ass about me feeding an animal to an animal because most people complain about it. Do the exact same thing. They just buy it in a bag form, but it's still one animal eating another. Kurt, anything you want to add? No, I don't know. The reason we... Thought this video because I told someone we had a, a snake that wouldn't eat alive, it only eats frozen thawed, and they didn't believe us. <laughs> you know, because it is in reverse. Usually it's the other way around. You know, some snakes that won't touch frozen thawed. And here's what happened is okay, I, I've had Kronos on, I've had any other snake. When I first got Kronos, I fed him live because it was what was available. Then I got more snakes. I was at that spot in size where it's much more convenient to just order from like Rodent Pro or another vendor, whoever you choose, and get a box full of frozen rodents, store them. You know, thaw out 8 to 10, feed those off. And he was eating frozen thawed. And we were that way for quite a while. And then we got to the point where that was getting really expensive. So Kurt started breeding rodents. And we started doing that. It got to where it was really cumbersome to kill those rodents just to feed those rodents. And we found that our difficult feeders would accept live a lot quicker as a way to get them back on feed. So we just switched to live. Because of the increased feed response and the better reaction we got, everybody just started getting live. Except this jack wagon. He'd gotten so used to me just tong feeding him frozen thawed, although now I'm using the tongs, that he would not take a live rodent. He'd just stare at it. Uh, for full disclosure, one time to test this theory, and I am going to get yelled at for this, and I understand why, but again, it was a curiosity of it. I wanted to see what would happen. I didn't know if it was the fact that it was frozen thawed or the fact that it was my hand and how the rat was presented. So I took a live rat, and I presented it to him the same way you saw me present a frozen thawed. I just held it down in there. And he came right up, and he took it. So I was like, it's the way I present. So I thought, okay, well, at least now I know what's going on. I wanted to see how that snake's mind was working, whether it was presentation or actually live versus frozen thawed. However, he bit, he coiled, the rat tried to move, and he dropped it. He dropped it right there and wouldn't touch it. And so then I took a frozen thawed, presented it, and he took the frozen thawed right away. So what it told me was it was actually a combination of the two. He's gotten so used to eating this way, he doesn't really want to mess with it any other way. I imagine if I had a battle of the wills and I tried to starve him out, he would eventually take live. What's the point in that? What's the point in having that battle to the point that it's detrimental to my snake when it's just easier to give him what he needs to be more comfortable? So that's what we do. We give him frozen thawed and... He's a happy camper. All right, guys, that's all I got. Kurt, unless you want to add anything, we're going to hop off of here. Nope. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.